This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Angel Eater Land. This map can be found over at kingmods.net, and there is a link down in the description below. But before that, this video is brought to you by Zach Schultz. Thank you for being a farm baron. So as I said, the link can be down in the description below. This map can be found over at kingmods.net. Does mean that it is PC only. I do not know if this particular map author has any intent on uploading it to the Giants mod up. But at any rate, let's go ahead and read a little bit of the description. Description is super short, so this won't take long. Welcome to Angelita Land. This is a fictional map. There are medium-sized fields, a large piece of forest for forestry work, Many productions already pre-placed. This map is helper friendly. Errors and suggestions for improvement are welcome. The map is designed for single player mode. Should work so far in multiplayer. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on in. So I'll say that if you load this map up in Farm Manager or start from scratch, you do not own any land at the start, but all of the buildings are pre-placed on the main farm so everything you see at the farm is exactly how it will appear in all play modes and let's go ahead and take a look if we take a look at the pda we'll zoom on out we'll see that we have a fair bit of fields in various shapes sizes and orientations take a look at the lands area we own the main Farm at the start, which can be bought for $143,000 on any of the other play modes. We also own fields one, two, and three. So field one is $155,000, $122,000, and $211,000, respectively. There is a biogas plant that we can buy on the map for $42,000. And if you notice that there are no triggers on the biogas plant until we buy the property. But I don't want to quite buy the property yet. We'll buy the property here in a little bit. We do have two large forest areas that we can buy for $185,000 and $170,000 respectively. Our biggest field on the map is going to be field 11. It is $1 million, followed by field 2, which is $987,000. Then we have much smaller fields like field number 36, which can be bought for $51,000. Now, there are a few other farms on the map that are much, much smaller. We have a, I believe that is a pig farm. We have a pig farm up here in the northeast, $18,000. We have a horse farm over here on the west for $52,000. And we have a sheep farm just to the side of the main farm for $12,000. We do have all of the standard crop types available to us here on Farm Sim 19. And if we go ahead and take a look at our crop calendar, we have the same generic crop calendar as we have seen on the base maps. So we are nothing special there. And if we take a look at our prices screen, we have something interesting. This is one of the few maps that I think I have noticed where we actually start in a new farmer mode with some crops in storage. So if you also start this map up in farm manager, you will also see those crops in storage. We do have multiple crops for all of our, sorry, we have multiple sell points for all of our crops that are available to us here in Farm Sim 22, including sugar beet cut and cotton. We do not have a sell point for seeds, but we do have multiple sell points for eggs. We have a sell point for wool and milk. Wood chip sell point. We can sell silage, hay, straw, and grass at various sell points. And then we move down to our production. And we do indeed have sell points for all of our production, except for whatever reason, we cannot sell chocolate. I think that's, that's an oversight. It's got to be an oversight of the map author because we have sell points for literally every other piece of production other than chocolate. So keep an eye out. Maybe 
this map will get updated and the ability to sell chocolate will be added. But then again, you don't have to produce chocolate if you don't want to, because chocolate is one of those finished goods. There isn't an intermediary step where you make chocolate and then use chocolate somewhere else. We do have a bulk line buy point and we do have the ability to get rid of our stones. Take a look at our starting equipment. It is all owned. None of it is leased. It is all relatively new and maintained. There are animal areas at the start, but we do not have any animals in them. And we do have contracts available. Take a look at the production chains. We do not start with any production chains. And that's why I did not want to buy the biogas plant yet, because I didn't get to this production chains screen. And there are no collectibles on the map. Let's go back here and go ahead and buy the biogas plant. You will see those trigger markers then pop up. And if we come over here now, we do have the biogas plant listed in our production chains. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting equipment. We start out with a whole lot of starting equipment. As far as medium tractors go, we have the Massey Ferguson 7726 and the 3670. We have under large tractors the Fent 1050 and Axion 960. We have the Kloss Tryon 750 Harvester. We have the 2017 pickup truck. And paired up with the Harvester, we have the 1080 10.8 meter flex grain header. We have the foldable 6 meter corn header. We also have then a header trailer for our grain header. As far as trailers go, we have the Brantner DD24073 slash 2 XXL trailer, as well as the Kloss Karat 140TD. We have in the plows the Ecomat Kuverlin plow, the Rustle Smash K12200. We have the Agrosim Culti plow 8 meter subsoiler, 435 horsepower. Let me just check. We do indeed have enough horsepower to use our subsoiler. Sometimes we don't even have enough power to use some of the equipment on some maps, but that does not appear to be the case here. As far as cedars go, we have the Rapid A800S cedar. We have the Pottinger wing mowers and front mower. We have the Kloss Cargos 9500 forage wagon and the Quadrant 5300 FC square baler. We have the Accusin FSX6372 square bale bale trailer. We have a pair of front loader arms as well as pallet forks. And we have a Kloss and bent weight. Wow, that was quite a list of starting equipment. Now let's go ahead and talk about the main farm here. Can the farms be customized? Yes, they can. So this farm, you can pretty much sell everything you see except for this tree and these stones. They are permanently in the map. And oddly enough, in my initial look around the map, I can't sell this pressure washer. I tried, and I can't sell it. Clicking on it. I can sell the lamppost. I can sell the building easy enough, but I can't get the uh, the pressure washer. So I'm gonna say that's that's like the only thing you cannot sell here on the main farm, which is kind of odd. I'm not gonna knock it. I'm not gonna take anything off. But it is odd that we could completely remove everything including the fence but this is stuck so i don't know how that is coded i fired i fired up elm creek on a test save and put one down and i could delete it so yeah it's not like it's it's something where you can't sell them once you place them in base game so i'm not really sure what's going on with that let's go ahead and do a little farm tour here go ahead and pull up the PDA will get a little idea of where we are with respect to the rest of the map and where we are with respect to the farm. We do have a storage tank here. This is going to be for 
solid fertilizer. We can buy or store things in there should we so wish. We have implement storage. Our main farm entrance. Over here we have liquid fertilizer storage or herbicide, I believe. So this is liquid fertilizer. More of our machinery. And even more machinery over here in this large contractor's shed. Our farmhouse is located right here. We do have our sleep trigger. And we do have our silo dump station. Located right there, we have our dump and our fill triggers. We have our chicken coop. This is just a base game chicken coop, so we really don't need to go into a whole lot of details on that, but that is a 360 chicken capacity chicken coop. Easy shed with some more implements. And we can indeed sell this easy shed. As I said earlier, we can sell all the lamp posts. We can sell the fence, should we so wish. We have our manure heap for our cows. We have our slurry point for our cows. And then we have a slurry tank storage located right here. Now this is a large cow building that has the automatic feeder. So if you're gonna manually feed, we do have our feeding trough right there. But we also have the ability to do the feeding robot so we have our mineral feed drop off. Then we have our silage, hay, and straw drop off right there. We have a silage bunker for compacting our silage. Over here we have two storage bins. One that you could use to store seed and the other you could use to store mineral feed, should you so wish. Or you could put mineral feed in both or seed in both. This little shed is just decorative, but it can also be deleted. And then we have our hay loft. So we have our dump and our fill point for hay and straw. And that is basically the starting farm tour. Now we're gonna go ahead and get set up for the fly around. We'll do a fly around on the map. We'll come back to the shop where we will get our Mahindra and then go ahead and take a look at all of the production and sell points on the map. Now, as far as production facilities, this map includes 12 built-in production facilities. We have a sugar mill, a cereal mill, oil, spinnery, the biogas plant, carpentry, bakery, dairy, tailor, grape, the grain mill, and the sawmill. So with respect to is this map, does it have built-in production or areas set aside for the placement of such? Yes, indeed it does. In fact, it has 12 built-in production points, so it's gonna get a full score with that regard. We've got a full score under Can Farms Be Customized? So we know that score already. And with respect to are the sell points included for all the base crops, animal outputs, and production elements? We're gonna get a three quarters of a point on that one because we are missing chocolate. It does seem to be maybe a little bit, a little bit severe to knock off a whole quarter point for just one missing crop. But that's what we're gonna to try to do. We're gonna to try to keep the scoring in quarter increments. So with that, we lose one quarter point I think that is just an oversight by the map author, so I'm sure an update will be coming to add chocolate to the cell points. As we move over here, we have the biogas plant, as you can see below. We have four unique silage bunkers, two pull through and two three-sided silage bunkers. We have an assortment of 
production and sell points. Over here we have the two large forested areas that I was talking about earlier. Located below here. We're getting a little bit of hitching going on, but the frames are, for the most part, stable at 60. So we have our grain mill down below. I believe our spinnery is over here in the southeast corner of the map. Located right there. Overall, the map is fairly flat. I mean, it is not totally flat. As we get a little bit lower, you can see kind of the subtle rolling hills that we have here. We move across the southern edge of the map. Nothing really extreme with respect to terrain elevation changes. The main farm does appear to be kind of maybe at the lowest point of the map, and then everything else around it is, is a little bit higher and sloping. But overall, it shouldn't be too difficult to farm on these fields, even if you are maybe a little low on horsepower. Got one of our cell points down below there. And then we have one more over here in the corner. This appears to be the biomass heating plant. Now just on the other side of this little pond is going to be the small horse farm that you could buy. Find that located right there. We will go ahead and take a more closer look at that when we do our drive around. Coming up here to the north west of the map, we do have kind of our our town area, our little city area. And in here we have a multitude of cell points and production points. Now, a lot of these buildings have been pulled from the Erlengrot map or Holt Bailaroon. So, with respect to buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique, we do have a mixture of buildings here. So, we do have a mixture of buildings from Erlengrot, which we know really do not take advantage of that new texturing technique. So, the map's going to get a half a point with respect to that scoring metric. While we do have buildings from Holt Bay of the Rune and maybe a few buildings from the... What is that? OMG. We have a... <laughs> a gravity-defying shopping cart. Leave it to me to find a floater, and boy, did we find a floater. That is for sure. Oh, that is funny. any rate... Since we do have a combination of buildings, we are going to give it a half a point score with respect to buildings and ground textures using the new texturing technique. Not a big deal at all, but it's just a point that I do want to make. So here we have the sheep farm that is just north of the main farm there. And we have our sheep pasture and we have a liquid fertilizer storage facility. Now, the shop is literally right across the street from the main farm. So that is what we are headed back to right now. And then we'll get our Mahindra and do our drive around. So down here at the main shop, we have our shop trigger and our customized repair and trade icon. So here we have that customized repair and trade icon. We do have a fairly large area for vehicles to spawn in at, so we shouldn't have too much of an issue in buying a bunch of machinery or larger machinery. 
We do want to look and see what it looks like to get out of this particular facility. To know if we're going to have difficulty in leaving this fenced-in area. Now, if we take a look, we do also have a workshop building, but no workshop trigger. And then we have our fuel station right here to refuel our vehicles. So we do have a rather large area here to get out of the shop, so we shouldn't have any issue coming out of the shop with some fairly large pieces of machinery. Since we've already taken a look at our main farm, we're going to go ahead and make our way down here to the south. And then we'll just kind of make our way around at that point. But I do want to get a little in cap perspective, which helps us really get a good idea of how the land is truly laying. Because sometimes you can get a false sense of flatness from the aerial view. But when you're talking about being down here, in the Mahindra, you can really get a good representation of how things look. What we'll do is go ahead and turn left here and make our way over to the spinnery and the sawmill. And then we'll double back and hit the other items on the western side of the southern part of the map. We have our spinnery located right off the main road here. Drop into a dirt road. This is the placeable spinnery that we can put down. We're gonna find our dump point right there, the spawn point for our pallets of fabric, and then our interactive trigger located right there. make our way back out to the main road and see if we can't hit the sawmill. I was hoping we could hit the sawmill from this area, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. We are a bit higher up now than we were cutting across the center of the map. And we kind of Get a nice little look across, across the way. Let's go ahead and dive on into the forest. See if we can't get to the sawmill from here. As far as the forest goes, it's it's looking pretty good. You know, we've got some nice grass growth underneath. Not a lot of shrubbery, but we do have some grass growth. It's a varied terrain, so it's not all one level. Sometimes you'll see a forest where the map author will maybe cheat a little bit, where they'll just uh, have a big flat section, they'll put a bunch of trees in, and they'll, they'll decorate the ground up, but ultimately it's all one level. And uh, once you clear it out, it, it becomes a big flat open space. Which could also be on purpose, depending on where the map is focused. So this is actually not the sawmill. I was mistaken, I believe. I was assuming it was the sawmill given its proximity to all of the forest here, but that is, I am thinking, a cell point. Yep, that is a cell point that is right there. We'll go ahead and tag it. And there is the green beam. 
So we've got a rather secluded cell point back in the forest. At this point, we might as well go counterclockwise around the map. As opposed to doubling all the way back. So, I believe the map the basis of this map is Holt Bay La Rune. I believe that is kind of the root of this particular mod map. A good hint is going to be the European style vehicles, right? Oh, up, up, up. Brakes, brakes, brakes. We have a rather interesting, maybe way down into this cell point. I like, I like maps where we have varying terrain elevations and such forth. It's kind of an interesting way down into here, that is for sure. Almost a uh, location that is not frequently traveled, given the amount of grass and everything. Here we have another leaf cell point. I believe this is a factory. Go ahead and take a look here at the name on the map. Yes, this is Land Land Howl, right? So that is indeed another cell point. And this road is going to us back down to where the main farm is. So the main farm buildings down there. So the shop and all those other buildings in that general direction. I'm gonna double back because I want to hit up the next item on the map, which is just north of here. Here we have the, I believe this is the cereal factory, if I am not mistaken. It is indeed, so the cereal factory. So we have our output for our pallets. We have our dump station and our interactive icon. Right there. Coming up where the biogas plant is going to be on our left. But before that, we have another facility here on our right. Watch out for those fast little cars. Oh, this is... Yep. And I believe this is another cell point right here. The, uh, yeah. The fabric place. <laughs> the fabric. The fabric place. So that is... Uh, 
And this is where I really wish we had the ability to sort in a different way. Sort by goods, sort by sell point. That would be super awesome. So here we have that particular sell point, which looks like it's going to focus on possibly our root crops. So far, all of these cell points and other areas are well decorated. They're well set up. I like how we have kind of different ways of getting into them. They all look a little bit different. Gives you a, a good bit of variety, both, both from the visual standpoint and from the gameplay standpoint. Here we are at our biogas entry. wide entry for large vehicles and trailers to come in and out of so we have our digestate out we have our slurry input we have our digester we have our interactive icon there then we move into two large three-sided bunkers Two pull through bunkers. Plenty of room here to add additional placeables or other items, silage bunkers, should you so wish. And then we have a little shed here for our biogas machinery. Now this is just a standard size map, but it does it does feel larger when you are driving around because of how all the roads are are set up. Now, while at the main farm, you're right across the shop from fuel and from the workshop in the um, in the store. You do have a fair bit to travel in order to get to a lot of these cell points and production areas, which can then, like I said, make the map feel a bit larger. So here we have the pig facility, the pig farm. And we will need to buy the pig farm in order to make use of it, is how I understand it. At any rate, we do have large pig area so we have our slurry point our food and our animal 270 pigs plenty of machinery storage there isn't a um isn't the farm house here so if you do play this on multiplayer you'll probably be wanting to put down your own farmhouse and other buildings to the tailor which is located right here so we have our wardrobe trigger at the front door we have our drop off for our fabric our interactive icon and then our clothing is going to spawn around the back of the building make our way along this road to wind around behind the tailor and then we have our sawmill finally right here as well as our carpentry so two companion production areas here right side by side which is really great to see so you can bring your logs here and sell them or you can bring your logs here and then process them into planks with a pallet spawn point for the planks right there and then you can bring that then over to 
carpentry there and then you'll get your spawn point for your furniture on the side of the building Another cell point over here. It is going to be the Agar M import. They are going to accept our root crops and multiple other grains. And we continue on as this dirt road kind of continues to wrap around. On the river. Here we have the grape processing facility, as well as a water trigger water trigger here and then our grape processing so we have our dump point for our grapes our interactive and our pallet spawn point now if we go over this bridge let's see if we can easily get back to the to the main road or if if this is literally a one-way trip around I would hope that it would circle back Although we may have to drive through a forest in order to eventually circle back I have seen these barns just kind of scattered around the map as decoration but you could also use them to store various things you could use them to store bales you could use them to stage or to stage machinery and whatnot. I kind of like how we have just some random, you know, decorative elements that can be functional. Should we so wish? I'm just going to kind of cut through here just for the sake of the video. our way around to the main town. It's going to be a little bit of a drive. Oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we Let's go ahead and cut across the top of the map. Field 11 is directly in front of us. That is the largest field on the map. is the, I believe that is the dairy. So here we can produce chocolate, we just can't sell it anywhere. So we have our dairy over here. I guess it turned off too soon. Yeah, it turned off the road too soon. So we have our dairy located right there that is one of the base placeable dairies i don't think we need to go into a whole lot of detail with that one. Oh, traffic is still brutal find 
pizzeria. Loop around field 51 to get to a couple of our markers. And here we have a bale cell point. Silage, hay straw, and grass bales there. And then our animal dealer located right here. Just wanted to see if we could operate the door. We cannot. So I've been watching this map for about a week now. I've been aware of it. I've downloaded it a few times. It's been updated a few times. And this is the first point where I felt that it was in a position where it was ready to show off and put into the channel. I was getting some issues in the logs on a couple of previous iterations of the map. So if you do find this map elsewhere, be sure that you are getting the original version it's going to be from the download link in the description because you may be getting a previous version of the map and therefore it may look a little different or it may play different because of some possible issues that it had earlier on. So over here we have our oil mill, our dump station, our pallet spawn point, and our interactive trigger. around back we have a stone crusher so there we are we have our stone crusher across the street we have our grocery store maybe we should go in and tell them about the, uh, the grocery store or grocery cart we found and if they're missing a grocery cart we can help them help them out tell them where they might be able to find it Oh, thank you for stopping. And not just walking straight through me like your uh, predecessor would have in Farm Sim 19. Uh, well, what's funny is we have the, the chocolate building here from Elm Creek. But no way to sell chocolate. Inside here we have a cell point trigger is just set up as another cell point here on the map. Sneaky, sneaky. Authorized vehicles only. I'm authorized. I've just authorized myself. We have the bakery here, so we have our drop point, our spawn point for our pallets. We have another fuel station. And then that should do everything here in town. And that was the uh, that was the dairy over there north of field 21. So just about done with the drive around everybody. Here we have another 
production facility. This is going to be the grain mill to mill our flour. We have our drop off, we have our pallet spawn point, and our interactive icon. We have the sheep farm, which is just above the main starting farm. So we have our main sheep farm there. We do have a bit of a farmhouse there, a little bit of a storage. And then we have liquid storage. And this will show up likely once we buy the property as having an interactive trigger. ahead and make our way down here to the main road and we've come nearly full circle there is a starting farm the shop and the gas station frizzy spiz extreme Sure you get some frizzy spiz down at the local grocery. As I mentioned, you'll see a few of these barns scattered around here, there, and yonder, filling up nice open space. Here we have the branch grain mill I believe this is just set up as a massive massive cell point so we have our dump station right there and we'll make our way to the horse farm We do have a small little garage there. We do have a farm. Farmhouse, we have our horse building here. So we have our dump point for food. We have our animal buy point. The horse area includes a nice little storage. And then we have also another large storage building over here. I like this treatment right here where we have this kind of little fenced in riding area. Nice little touch. And now we will make our way down to the southwest corner of the map, which will then conclude the map video and the drive around. So I think while we're driving down here, we'll just go ahead and once again summarize summarize where we are with all of our rankings and then go ahead and tell you the final score we've got here. Production being built in, yes. There are 12 built-in production elements on the map, so we get a full point on that regard. Sadly, we're going to lose a quarter of a point because the map does not have the ability to sell chocolate. We have the ability to sell all the grains all of the animal outputs and all of the production except for chocolate so i am going to have to knock off a quarter of a point there so we get just three quarters of a point for does the map include all the cell points for all of the base game props animal outputs and production areas can the farms be customized yes indeed the farms can indeed be customized oddly oddly enough you can't sell the pressure washer at the main farm which is a little odd but other than that, I'm going to give it a full 1.0. 1, I'm going to give it a little bit of a pass, I guess, on just that pressure washer. Here we have the biomass heating plant. As far as buildings where appropriate, using the new texture technique, 
yes they are half the buildings seem to be from Erlengrot or Holt Bailarun and we know that Erlengrot is not using the new texture technique so we are going to get a half a point score on that particular item and are the player and interactive triggers marked clearly I say they are so far it seems like it's fairly easy to figure out where things are for a player standpoint if you have the little icons showing up and of course you can always turn those off if you wish so overall we're going to give this map a total of 4.25 out of 5 so here we have another sub point and then another bail cell point right there we'll go ahead and just check and see how they are named on the map so we have shuni and yeah that one and then we will come up here to one more area which is going to be the sugar mill which will then close out this video i'll be curious to know from you guys down in the comments below what do you think of this map this map that you'd be interested in playing it's going to be going into the european map category did see a american flag at the horse farm but we will just kind of chalk that up to some crazy american living there at the horse farm and being proud overall we have european traffic we have european pedestrians and we definitely have european names for the sub points so here we have base game Sugar Mill with our pallet spawn point, our interactive icon at the door, and no doubt we will have our dump station right here around that. So guys, that is going to do us for yet another Farm Sim 22 map tour. Let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of the map? Is this a map worth trying? I think it would play pretty interesting on multiplayer. Clearly you have one large central farm. So it would play very well as a cooperative multiplayer server. Or if some people wanted to kind of branch out a little bit and do their own thing. At the same time as supporting a kind of collective multiplayer server. Then we do have a pig farm, a sheep farm, and a horse farm. So we could have in total four different farm areas, but clearly the main farm is really set up to be that main production facility. And until next time, happy farming.